Hey guys, well today I'm going to do another test of this birch oil. Um, I'm going to use it for a leather protector. Um, I've already used it. I have this Husqvarna hatchet here, pretty beef, beefy hatchet. But I've already uh, treated, first of all I treated the blade with it. You know it's just, I mean it's just like oil, or it is oil. And then um, as far as the, uh, the mask or whatever, I put it all over the mask and I tend to coat things pretty heavy so I mean the screws still have some of it on it and stuff but I really coated the heck out of it and it absorbed into this pretty good and it's got just a tiny bit of that birch oil smell to it but mostly it's made this leather you know it's protected it I think it's done a pretty good job um, just as good as fixing wax or anything else. As a matter of fact, I think it's done a little bit better job than fixing wax only because, now when I say better, I just mean, um, the only reason would be because I didn't need to apply heat to it. Where the fixing wax, it goes on real pasty, like beeswax or something, it's just super pasty. And then I, I usually go over a gas burner or something like that and try to melt it into the leather. I didn't need to do that with the birch oil. It just soaked right in. and. You know, it wouldn't kill. It wouldn't kill this thing to put a little, even a little bit more on it. It does, like I said, it, it uh, gets on the screw heads or whatever, the snap head and stuff. So I mean, it's sticky on there, and it's, you know, whatever. It's not the end of the world. You can just rub it off or whatever. You can still smell a little bit of the leather through the birch oil smell. I don't know. I think it's doing a pretty good job. So what I've got now what I want to try. I wanted to try it on something, I mean I like this hatchet, but I don't really care about the mass that much. Um, it's not that big a deal. So I wanted to try it on something that I didn't really care about too much. And the next thing I'm going to try it on is my LT Wright Genesis sheath. So I'm just going to remove the knife. And you can see I've already, I've already done part of the sheath right there. Hopefully you guys can see that. I've already done part of the sheath and it's already starting to soak in. So I'm going to reset the camera up and show you how I treat it. Okay, as you can see, I've made almost a pint of this oil right now. And I've noticed that after I've let this sit a little bit, um, there is a little bit of tar in this. It's way down on the bottom. So... Um, I tried another method just to try to extract the oil without getting tar and basically what I did is I tried a longer burn time with less heat. Now I'll tell you, it did make the oil less thick and more of a finer oil, but and this was one of my burn collection things here, I used both these. When I use that lower burn temperature and longer burn time, and it's been raining, keep in mind it's been raining here, it's been flooding here in Minnesota actually, so everything was wet, my birch oil was wet, the ground was a little bit wet. I had about that much water and about a quarter inch of oil. I mean, nothing, hardly. So I had to totally drain off all the water and I still had the container full of um, birch bark. I actually used like a popcorn tin that I found at the thrift store. A huge tin that I thought, man, I could really make a good batch with this. Well, I didn't let it burn for long enough and I didn't do a hot enough burn. So basically, you know, I got a bunch of water in it. More water this time than I've ever gotten. Um, so I just had to, you know, extend the, extend the burn time and uh, increase the heat a little bit. Um, it, it, it eliminated some of the tar but I didn't get near the yield and so anyway I've just been experimenting with it so I've just got a little I've been trying to siphon off some of the water and putting it into different containers and it leaves oil and whatever I got birch oil freaking everywhere so I'm just gonna take my glove and just uh, apply that onto my my sheath
thing that I like about this, uh, I love the fix and wax. So, I mean, don't get me wrong, I love fix and wax. But the thing I like about this is it's you can really apply it everywhere. That you can uh, drip it into those hard to get areas, like up by your ferro rod, whole thing there. You can just kind of drip it, and it's it's more liquidy, obviously, and you can get it down in that seam right in there. Now you're not going to want to do this with some thing that's, you know, tanned a real light color or something because, I mean, the oil's black. But for me, this is close enough to black. My, my Genesis, Genesis sheath is close enough to black to where I don't really care. So that used up quite a bit of oil in there. Got a little bit of oil in here. So you, for me, I'd never be able to really, or I'm sure I probably could, but it's a pain in the butt to get in, in behind this uh, belt strap in here with the fixing wax. So I like, I like that aspect of it. Now, whether it's as good as the fixing wax and stuff, you know, I, I don't know. I just know that it's, it's applying good and it, and it does seem to be protecting the, uh, the leather pretty decently. So it's all a nice, nice shiny black there. I'm going to get even the ends here. I'm actually even going to do this back side of this belt loop. Now that's going to be up against your clothes, so if you wear something other than BDUs all summer, you're probably not going to want to do that. Me, I don't really care. I'm even going to get a little bit into here, into the knife there, or the, where the knife goes. Well, I really don't see a reason why all this stuff can't be treated. You can see it's already starting to starting to soak in in there. So I'm gonna probably hang this sheath from something in my garage here and let as much of it soak in. As I possibly can. And uh wipe the excess off the screws and off that loop and stuff so you know like I said I don't really care if it stains my pants or anything but I just don't want a ton of birch oil all over my leg or whatever so I'll make sure and try and wipe some of that off just the excess now see it's getting you can tell or hopefully you can see this on the camera this isn't a hundred percent black right there it's a little grayish so that tells me that there's a little bit of water and the water will of course the oil rises to the top and I've had this I've been having um, it's been kind of a process separating the oil from the water so I mean it'll still protect but 
kind of makes it gummy when you got all that water in there and not 100% black. Hmm. I think maybe I'll go to the real stuff now. Maybe wipe some of that crap off because it's got the water in it. I don't like that. Probably can't see it, but a nice, much more uniform color. You can tell that's all oil. It doesn't have any water in it. More of a pure product. So anyway, it's already soaking in. It's soaked in on that belt loop part. I'm not going to have to wipe any of that off. Just going to, it's not even wiping off on my glove. Just going to let all this soak in, kind of rub it in a little bit better. Yeah, it's totally, you can totally feel it's not, it's not super runny like it was. So this leather's soaked up a ton of it already. All right, another application for the birch oil. Okay guys, well it's been about a half an hour and you can see how the oil has completely soaked into the leather now. Uh, not completely, I'm sorry. Um, it's starting to, com to soak in. There's a little bit of extra left over. I'm just going to let this soak overnight or uh, dry overnight. But you can tell how it's totally soaked into the leather. I think that's going to protect it pretty nice. Anyway, there you go.